Okay, this time we want to look again at Blanchard and Fabriki in their chapter 10 on queuing theory. And this time I'd like to talk about single channel queuing models. So it's section 10.3 of the text. I'm going to use the same example that they're using there in the, in the text in terms of a Poisson distributed arrival in an exponential service. A little different than other simulations that we looked at. But you may find when you're designing your system that quite a few of your service processes will fall into this category with a Poisson distribution for the arrival of your activities, but an exponential distribution of the amount of time it takes to process of those activities going through. So let's take a look at the example that was in our text up until now. So the arrivals per period were given is um, an expected arrival per time period of 0.1. So again, if this is minutes, you're going to see a tenth of an arrival per period or a 10 minute average arrival time under a Poisson distribution. We're given that in terms of our distribution. We're told that the servicing of one of those arrivals um, takes about four units of time. So the average amount, the mean amount of processing per time period to make sure it matches the time periods of the arrivals would be 0.25. So it takes about 10 time periods on average for a something to arrive, it takes about four time periods on average to process it. So again, our processing time is a lot shorter than our arrival time. So we expect the system to operate at a balance of some sort and to work for our design. But before we commit to the design and move forward, we really ought to do some analysis on it in terms of a simulation. And this would be known as a single channel queue where all of the arrivals have to be processed by a single service queue. So they're gonna to have to sequence themselves as they come through. Now the text goes on to multi um, queuing exercises where we might have an arrival period that's feeding into two or three or four different service machines, uh, like the cashiers at the front of a, of a store or something like that. But this particular simple, simple example is we're gonna have items arriving under a Poisson distribution and they have to be ser single thread serviced um, by our one process that has a queue that will manage them with a mean value of 0.25 periods going through. So those are the two distributions we have going on in terms of our requirements going through. So as we do with most simulations, we want to be able to build uh, an accumulative probability distribution for each of those distributions that we can use to run simulation repetitively um, against that model. So for arrivals per period, I'm going to assume that 0 to 10 could be my arrival rate as I go through. And I'm going to take a basically the Poisson formula for that and calculate the cumulative, the individual probabilities of that occurring. Uh, so there's a 90% chance that 0 we're going to arrive and a 9% chance that 1 will arrive. And, as long, and again, as long as this falls to 0 and everything adds up to 100, uh, which it does, I know I've got my cumulative distribution covered as I go through. Um, I'll convert that into my lookup formulas. Um, again, taking all these values, shifting them by one, so I have a cumulative probability now uh, that starts at 0% and goes to a 1. So the extra values here with the 1s means I could have left off uh, a chunk of the values because they're not going to get used the way a lookup works. But I typically um, overrange my data on the values to make sure I don't come up too short as I go through. On the service side, um, the question becomes how long is it going to take to service something as it goes through? And we're told that's an exponential distribution from 0 to n minutes, where I take my exponential function um, and ca calculate the cumulative, cumulative exponential probability for a mean of 0.25 coming through that formula. So again, the f these functions are built into Excel directly. You can very, very quickly use them as you go through. So now I've got a cumulative probability function for the arrivals, and I've got a cumulative probability for of the service duration, the first based on Poisson, the second based on exponential. So now I can start to simulate things. What's going to happen in each of the periods? And I've built this spreadsheet out to 200 periods over time. But again, you can extend that or shorten it as you see fit. It's easy enough to copy the rows and copy the cells here in Excel. So in a matter of seconds, you could go from 200 periods to 1,000 periods if you want. Uh, but typically, you find if you go 100 to 200 cells or even less, 50 to 100 often, uh, that the average values of your of your process are going to work out just fine. If you're going to have a bottlenecking problem that you need to pay attention to in design, you're going to spot it usually in the first 20 observations, much less the first 200 observations as you go through. But again, to be on the safe side, we'll do 200 observations as we come through. So the first thing I want to do is determine when my units arrive, which on average is going to be every 10 minutes, remember. Uh, so I need a, for every given time period, every minute, <coughs> I need a random number. 
or I'm using the Excel random number function because it gives me a, a value from 0 to 1 that is uniformly distributed. And that's what I need to have. If I map the uniform distribution through a lookup function against the non-uniform distribution, in this case the Poisson, I'll find out how many arrivals take place in that time period. So if I can, if I can do that now, I expect there to be mostly zeros since 90% of the time nothing's going to arrive. And roughly every 10 minutes I'm going to get one, sometimes two arriving, but one's going to be the, the common arrival. And in fact, that's what I see. So I'm using an Excel lookup function that looks up the, prob looks up the probability in column I looks it up in column C, finds the largest value smaller than the probability. So in this case, point six seven nine um, is starts picks up a zero and has a zero after it. And I pick up the value in column A. So again, in this case, uh, the nature of the distribution is such that I expect um, to have zero most of the time. So I've color coded in Excel to say highlight for me whenever it's not zero because I don't expect them to happen every that often. But if I scroll through this data, I'll see that yes, about on average every 10 entries there should be one arriving, but there's large stretches where they don't. So again, that's exactly what I'm trying to test in terms of my simulation. Is this expected value says that one's going to arrive every 10 minutes but i may have stretches here where it appears that i one only arrives you know, here's 20 minutes uh, where none arrive so th I, that's exactly what i'm trying to simulate as i go through so if i continue now that's my distribution of arrivals i do the same thing for service time i want to count you want to do my mapping so i generate a new random number for each of the 200 observations here and i'll do a lookup function to pull the appropriate number of minutes the service will take from that distribution. So again, this one, that's a 5.669 right here. I look that up in the list and find a 632 um, is the uh, number that's smaller than that. I'm going to get a number of 5 on that as I go through. I think I'm off by 1, but that's okay. Um, for simulation purposes, then, now that I've got my service time, I can start to look at my arrival and wait time as I go through. Because I know my arrivals. Um, for the most part, if nothing is arriving, not much will happen in my system. So I don't have to worry about that. But I can calculate when can the process best start. What's the earliest that the process can start? And that's based on when the one before it is done, since there's only a single queue. So far, I have no servicing going on. Nothing has arrived. So the first item happens in time period 12. It Nothing has had to wait because the process isn't busy yet. But it can start in 12. Um, the service time I had generated for that value was a 3 and therefore it's going to be done at time period 15. Which means the next item, what, whatever it is, has to wait until 15 to start because it has to wait until the prior one is done. That's where these values start to differ. So if nothing's happening in the cell, so this one arrives in um, after one time unit, but the earliest it can start is time period 12, um, and it's going to take three time periods to work, so it's going to finish up at 15. Which means the next item can't start until at least 15. Uh, and in fact, it's going to be later than that in the process because it doesn't arrive until 25. So it arrives in period 25. I've got a, an idle system at that point, so I can actually start processing in 25. The service time in this case generated at 20, 19 minutes, which is almost five times the average rate. So it's taking a long time. So it won't finish up until time period 44, which means fortunately nothing else is arriving right after it because the system is tied up until 44. So if I come down here in item 40, one does arrive. It's going to have to wait because the one before it is taking up until 44 to be done. So it's going to have to wait four units before it can start. And then that one, by luck of the draw, requires eight minutes to get processed out to 52. So there's a lot going on here in terms of sometimes an item that arrives has to wait because the prior unit is still being processed. Um, it's very important to pay attention to because it adds to the processing time going through. Other columns I can add are idle time. There's going to be periods in which the system as a whole is sitting doing absolutely nothing. That's what happened here in the first three minutes because my first custom, my first item didn't arrive till the fourth minute. So for the first three minutes, the system sat idle. And then the service time on that was only one minute, so the item repeated and returned to its idle state again. Um, when I have a, an item that takes a long time to process, and most of these are taking very little time to process, uh, I find that um, the idle time is not there. I'm, gonna hit, I'm hitting the calculate sheet to get a different answer here. Um, 
you know, so here I've got a, a system that's not idle at all because I've got all kinds of activity going on here. Some of my system is idle, other times that it's not. Uh, the last thing I can look at is how long is something in the system. Um, you know, so here's a case where something arrives in time period one. It doesn't have to wait, so it takes 13 time periods to work. It's in the system for 13 time periods. Um, likewise, here's one that waits only one time period. So I'm looking for one that has some extra wait time associated with it. Let me generate some new data. Um, here's one. It took a while. This period of systems really well balanced. So I had to hit calculate, generate new random data several times uh, to make sure I got something that had to wait. So here's an item showing up in time period four that takes six time periods to get processed. So it's not done until 10. Uh, so this next item comes two items later. Another one shows up in item one, but the one that showed up in item four is going to take until item 10 to process. So the earliest this unit can start is in time period 10, even though it arrived in time period six, which means it's got to wait four units. So when I'm all done, I can look at how long the that unit was in the system. It's in the unit for nine items. Five for being processed, plus four for being weighted. So as wait time goes up, the in-system time for each item also goes up um, as you see your way through. And again, I can vary all that data as I go. And so once I've built the full simulation, I'll typically build my total quality into the top. I can build them into the bottom, but then I spend a lot of time scrolling up and down. So I often build my simulation totals up here into the top. So I've processed 200 units. My service time um, has a peak of 12. The longest one I take is 12 units, but on average it's going to take 3.8 units, which is what I expect because the average was 4 units per item on the exponential distribution. So my distribution is coming out very near what I would expect it to be. Um, my, average, my average wait time is 1.6 units as I go through. So a lot of units are in fact waiting as I go through, um, but it could be worse as I see my way through. I've got, on average, my system is, is idle for almost half a time period for every unit that's processed as I see my way through. So in general, though, I don't see much of a mess. My system's not always very busy. I've got a lot of idle time built in, but for the most part, I'm able to process my units as I go through. Again, if I calculate the spreadsheet over and over again, I'm gonna find that my, my average service time will fall near the four that I've got. It went up a little bit here to 4.5. As I go, my arrival rate, which is 0.1, um, usually falls around 0.1 as I go through here. So I just highlight these cells just for a minute to make sure I'm looking at the correct cells at all times. Okay, these are the two values I'd be paying attention to as I see my way through. And I don't want this wait time to go up too high or my idle time to go up too high. So the fact that one item had to wait four units, but on average I had uh, 0.6 units of wait time. It might be higher than I want, but on in general, the system is balancing out to about what I expected. The average service time is a little longer than the expected time, so I might want to run lots of simulations uh, to see how that works by doing a recalculate over and over again as I go through. Uh, my expected value here of 115 is reasonably close to the point one that I started with. The average service time is falling around four, and there's, there's as high as five. Um, four and a half. So I'm looking at that average service time in column J, making sure it doesn't climb too much. Sometimes it's 5.5. Uh, 5.5 is fine. Remember, it's about every 10 time periods that I see um, a unit arrive. So I don't tend to see that process go too bad. So this process looks like it's in reasonable balance. If Assuming these distributions are correct, it looks like it would be safe to move forward with their design as I go through. So again, to, to double check that, I should vary some of these parameters. What if um, the units arrived twice as fast as I expect. So let's up this to, to point 0.2 as we go through and do a, another recalculation. Okay, now we're, again, the two, point 0.2 makes sense. That's what we expect, that our average service time is going up to 5. But our, our wait time has started to climb. At least one unit had to wait 37 time periods, and the average wait is up to 14. So the in-system time now has gone up to 18. So if this Poisson number of 0.1 was not accurate, my design's gonna be in trouble. Let's take it up to 0.3 and see what happens to our design. So we're doing what's called sensitivity analysis, saying how important are these parameters? So this parameter here, what is the average arrival time? Because we're basing it on the distribution, you shouldn't be surprised that it's close to the expected value. That's how we generated them. But looking at the service times, service time is going up. We had an expected time of four, 
but the service time is going up as we're seeing our way through. We're getting large service times, very large system in time. The, we, have a, we have a unit came into the process that had to wait 107 units um, to get out. So when you're only processing and in the system for seven or eight minutes, you certainly don't want to be waiting 107 minutes. Now you say you don't see that time here because you're not seeing the backup. So let's scroll down through some of this data here toward the bottom. You can see what's happening. The wait times are backing up and packing because some of these items are taking a long time to work their way through the process. And as we get down to the bottom, we see huge wait times associated with these items. They're far enough apart that some of it is smoothing out. By the time we get to 170th item, that item is going to wait 86 minutes before it gets its two minutes of processing, resulting in 88 minutes in the system. That's not good. 105. You notice the wait time is increasing as we work our way down. If I were to add more iterations, maybe take the 200 to 1,000, I'd find the number gets even bigger because it's not going to get better. In general, this shows a system that if, if my arrival time is double or triple what I thought it was going to be, this system is going to break down. So I've either got to lock down that number and make sure they're not going to arrive that much faster, or I've got to look for a, a process that can be done a lot faster uh, than four minutes uh, to keep things going. So again, this the simulation doesn't tell you what your design has to be. It validates that the design you're about to make, the design you're starting to move toward, will not be viable unless your assumptions hold. So if you're absolutely confident that the expected arrival rate is in fact 0.1, um, and the, the service duration time will in fact be four minutes, then go ahead with the design. You're fine. But the simulation shows that you are very sensitive to those numbers, that if the arrival rate starts to pick up, this design would be in trouble. So the sooner you address that before you commit to major design steps, the better. And that's really the job of uh, a simulation model like this. Now this particular simulation was of a single queue. An obvious answer, if things start to arrive faster than we expect, is to go to a double queue. Go to two queues or three queues. If you can add more pipelines to your process, saying if the store gets really busy, we'll open another register, then you're going to be fine. But if it's the kind of process where you can't open another register because the service process is on a very expensive specialized machine, you're going to have to fix your numbers. So it really comes down to are you going to be able to adjust your process as you move into the design to have that kind of redundancy to go to a multi-queue problem, which your chapter continues on to discuss as you see your way through. So very often the problems you have in a single queue simulation will be solvable by moving to a multi-queue simulation. But then your complexity, your system complexity goes up proportionally to that. You've got to make sure you can manage that risk. But these are the tools you've got for figuring out whether your process is going to work before you commit to the process and get it all implemented.